Hey everyone, Tyler Hart here. Uh, today we're going to do the quick and dirty MicroTik single area OSPF configuration. This is um, the, kind of the TLDR version of the longer OSPF video that I'm working on now, where we talk through um, how to look at LSAs, we talk through what the logs look like, we talk through some of kind of the nuance of OSPF. But for those of you that maybe don't need the nuance, you really, you have a good understanding of what OSPF is, you just want to see it done on MicroTix so that you can duplicate this in your environment, that's what this video is for. Now before we get into it, this is a brand new channel. I'm really excited to be back uh, developing content around Microtik, Ubiquity, and a lot of the other vendors uh, that are out there and a lot of new open source projects that have shown up in the last couple years. Uh, so do us a favor, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, great, go ahead and hit that like button if it helped you make a difference in your network and we'll go ahead and get started. So we've got two routers right now, two brand new Microtik routers. They have no configuration on them whatsoever. The other than me going in and setting the system identity so that I know which router is, is which and I don't get confused. Uh, there's a top and a bottom. You can see here on the top, I've just gone in and called it top. Um, on the bottom one, you see the exact same thing under system identity, it's just the bottom. Uh, these are the only configs we have right now. So we'll start out putting IP addresses on our interfaces. We'll create the loopback for OSPF. We'll verify that we have a ping from top to bottom, bottom to top, so that we are so that we know that OSPF has a good foundation, and then we'll start advertising networks in OSPF. I'm gonna start with the slash 30 addresses here uh, between the top and the bottom router. Those are, those are the quickest, the easiest. Um, both routers are connected via Ether1. Uh, so let's verify that we're on, let's switch on over to the top router here. When I click on these menus, the dropdowns in Winbox are rendered as separate windows, so my capture software doesn't necessarily always capture the dropdown. Um, I'll just tell you what I'm clicking as I'm clicking it. Um, so right now I'm clicking IP and then addresses. This pops up our address list. Uh, so it looks like our slash 30 is on Ether1. And it is 10.255.0.1 slash 30. We will create a comment there. We'll just say WAN. All right, let's switch on over to the bottom, do the same thing. Under IP addresses, we'll add a new address. Ether1 is already selected, awesome. 10.255.0.2 slash 30. Give it a comment again here, we'll call it the WAN. Always good to add a comment. All right, so we should have IP connectivity from top to bottom. Let's go, since we're on the bottom, let's go ahead and ping the top. That's 10.255.0.1. All right, there we go. We got good pings. So we have connectivity between the routers. So let's go ahead and add the IP addresses now for the LANs on each route on each of the respective routers. All right, so on the top router here, We've got the WAN address already put in place. Let's go ahead and add the LAN addresses. In my case, I'm just gonna use Ether2 for both of them. Now in a production network, we would probably put different LANs on different interfaces, or we'd be using VLANs uh, more than likely. But in this case, this is just for demonstration purposes with OSPF, and OSPF doesn't really care what kind of interface it's on. So we're just gonna put both of the LANs on Ether2 and just kind of call it good for OSPF purposes. Now I'm gonna use the lowest IP address, dot one, in the LAN. Uh, some people like to use the highest, dot 254, because this is a slash 24 network. Uh, OSPF doesn't care which you use because OSPF is distributing networks, not specific IPs in this case. So again, we'll call this the LAN. Let's do the same thing for the 10.1.2 network on Ether2. Again, we'll give it a comment, LAN. All right, let's switch on over to the bottom. We'll do the exact same thing. All right, so on the bottom router, we are on the 10.9 uh, subnet. Uh -oh. oh, almost did a bad thing there. There we go. Comment, LAN, okay. We'll add one more, 10.9.1.2.0 slash. Oh, I, <laughs> what is this? Come on now. 10.9.2.1, there we go. 
Get it together. Is that a comment, LAN? All right, so we got the 10.9.1, the 10.9.2, and we've got our WAN. All right, so we've got our LAN interfaces set up right now. Neither LAN is reachable across the routers because we haven't distributed the routes for those yet. Uh, we're gonna do, but we're gonna get there shortly with OSPF. So there's one last thing that we need to do with IP addresses specifically, and that's create the loopbacks. We're gonna use the loopbacks for OSPF so that OSPF always has an interface to run on that is up and stable all the time. And I'll get more into kind of the nuance of the best practices around OSPF uh, in the longer MicroTik OSPF video. Uh, but for this video today, we're just gonna create the interfaces, throw an IP address on them, call it good. So let's switch back over to the top. We are going to create a new bridge interface. We're going to call it OSPF loopback. It doesn't really matter if we're running spanning tree on this or not, because it's not going to get bridged to any physical devices. I'm just going to leave it at the default. Um, this is one time where I'm not going to create a comment for this interface because the name is OSPF loopback. I mean, it's kind of hard to forget what this does. So let's switch on over to the bottom. We'll do the same thing. Bridge. Create a new bridge, OSPF, loop back, okay. All right, well, since we're on the bottom here and we already have the IP address window open, let's go ahead and add the loop back address, that slash 32, onto the bottom bridge interface we just created, 10.255.255.2. Now, I could put the slash 32 in, but I don't need to. Uh, in router OS, if I don't specify a subnet, it just automatically assumes it's a slash 32. I'm going to choose my loopback. I'm going to put a comment in that this is the OSPF loopback address. Cool. So IP addresses on the bottom are done. Let's switch on over to the top, and we'll put the IP address on the bridge interface as well. 10.255.255.1. On the OSPF loopback again, OSPF loopback address. Got to be able to spell. That is a prerequisite for the job. All right. So on both of our devices, we've got two LAN addresses. We've got our slash 30 WAN address, and we've got our slash 32 loopback. We can see it here on the top, and we see the exact same thing here on the bottom. Love it. All right. So let's go ahead, and we switched back to the top. We'll start the OSPF configuration on the top now. All right, so we're going to click under Routing, and then down OSPF. I know you can't see it, but it's pretty self-explanatory, just Routing OSPF. So the first thing that we're going to do is start advertising our Slash 30 network. When two routers both advertise the same network, then OSPF will form an adjacency over that connection. So let's do the slash 30 first. That'll kind of bootstrap OSPF up where it needs to be. And then we'll start advertising the other networks over that connection, like the LAN, connect, uh, the LAN networks, the loopback network. So we're gonna add the network, not, not the individual slash 30 IP address, but, we're, but the network. Remember, OSPF advertises networks. Not, not individual IPs. You can, but we'll, we'll get to that in another video. So we are going to advertise our connection to the 10.255.0.0 slash 30 network. And this is on the backbone area. Um, if you want uh, kind of an introduction to what areas are and talking about why you might want multiple areas and things like that, uh, go check out the other video. We will call this our WAN network. I'm gonna switch down to the bottom router now. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Routing, OSPF, hit the networks tab, and we're gonna advertise the exact same network because the top router has a connection to this network. Well, so does the bottom router. Now in this version of Winbox and Router OS, for some reason, when you create something in OSPF, it's red until you click a different tab and then come back to it, and then it shows up as black. So these entries are not 
invalid. I, I don't. The, the, I suspect that this is a bug, either in the latest version of Winbox or in the latest stable version of Router OS. Uh, so I'm going to post something in the Microtik forum about that and see what the uh, see what the Microtik folks say. So the top router and the bottom router are now advertising the same network over their connection. They should have formed an adjacency by now. Since we're on the bottom router, we're just going to click the Neighbors tab. This will tell us what OSPF neighbors we have. Aha! And it looks like we have an OSPF neighbor. We have formed an adjacency. Now the router ID for the OSPF neighbor is 10.1.1.1. If you do not specify the router ID in, my, in OSPF, it will automatically choose an IP address on the device to use. Uh, I don't like this, especially for when you're trying to troubleshoot OSPF. So one of the things that we will do to make our lives easier is we will go to our OSPF instance. Notice here the router ID on the bottom says 0000. We are going to use that loopback address for the OSPF instance's router ID. This will help us keep track of what router is advertising what routes on our network. So we did that on the bottom. Let's go ahead and switch on over to the top and let's do the exact same thing. So we'll go back to our instance. We'll specify the loopback for the top router. So we've changed the router ID to 10.255.255.1. Let's look at our neighbors now. Ah, see, now the, now I'm starting to see my loopbacks as my neighbors. So I can maintain an inventory of which routers have these slash 32 loopback addresses. It makes it super easy to identify the, the, the devices. Let's switch on over to the bottom and see if we see the same thing. So on the top router, my neighbor is the bottom. Now on the bottom router, my neighbor should be the top. There we go. All right. Love it. All right. So we're advertising our slash 30 link between the routers. Now we need to advertise the slash 32 loopback IP addresses. That's a best practice. Um, it makes it makes it a lot easier to administer OSPF and administer the devices by using their loopback address rather than uh, the IP address of an individual interface. Uh, it makes your life a lot easier as your network scales up. I'll talk more about the best practices in the longer OSPF video. Um, but yeah, so we're going to advertise the loopback IPs, the individual IPs. We're also going to then advertise the local area network subnets. Uh, so we'll start here on the top. So we need to advertise the 10.255.255.1 uh, address, and we need to advertise the 10.1.1.0 and 10.1.2.0 subnets. So in the Networks tab, just add 10.255.255.1 with a comment, loop back. I just realized that I had clicked into the wrong router. I'm glad I caught myself early on. All right, now I'm actually in the top router where I should be. A big lump. All right, 10.255.255.1. Comment. Loop back. This is where it starts to get a little hairy when you got a bunch of different Winbox windows open and you got a bunch of different putty windows open or something like that. All of a sudden you realize you're doing the right thing in the wrong window. We are going to advertise this subnet. This is our LAN. We're going to advertise the other LAN as well. LAN. All right. I'm going to click on over to a different tab and come back just so that you can see that they're all not actually red. Everything looks good here. Let's switch on over to the bottom router. Let's look at the routing table real quick just to see if our new OSPF advertisements from the top have made it down to the bottom router. I'm gonna click on IP and then routes. Let's look at our routing table. Aha, there they are. So we're on the bottom router and we can now see subnets that are connected to the top router. We see the loopback for the top router. We also see the individual LAN subnets. I bet you I can open a terminal. I bet you I can ping now the loopback address for the top router. There it is. 
All right, so we have full reachability, at least from the bottom to the top. Now we need to advertise networks from the bottom so that we get reachability both directions. So we're gonna do just the same thing we did before. We're gonna advertise the loopback first. Doesn't really matter what order you do it in. I just like to do that first. Loopback, okay. Now we need to advertise the LANs connected to the bottom router. So that's gonna be 10.9.1.0 slash 24. Call that a LAN. And we're gonna do 10.9.2. Dot one. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Advertising subnets here, not IP addresses. Come on. All right. So we are advertising the slash 30. We're advertising the loopback, advertising land number one, land number two. Click back over because the red color is driving me nuts. All right. Let's look at the routing table on our top router now. We should be seeing bottom routes on the top device. Switch on over to the top here, your IP and then routes. There we go, we're seeing the same thing. So we see the loopback address for the bottom router and we see LAN number one and LAN number two on the top router. There we go. One more thing I'm gonna show you, the routing OSPF. We can look at our OSPF routes here if you want to see just your OSPF routes, if you have a huge routing table with a bunch of other stuff or you're running other routing protocols and you just want to see your OSPF routes for troubleshooting purposes, you can go into I, or go into routing OSPF and then click on the routes tab and that's going to show you everything that OSPF knows about. So OSPF knows about the slash 30. It knows about both loopbacks. It knows about the top lands and it knows about the bottom lands. All right, so that's your quick and dirty Microtik single area OSPF configuration between two routers. Again, um, please go ahead and subscribe to our new channel. Uh, again, I'm really excited to be putting new content out. Uh, if you found the video useful, please go ahead, uh, give us a like so that we know that we're doing a good job. Leave some comments in the comments if you want to see something different. Uh, if you saw something where I goofed or whatever, let me know, and, uh, and I'll shoot you back a message. Thanks, everybody.